Welcome future EMTs. Today we're going to get into the weeds of the National Registry exam category of medical slash OBGYN. We'll go over 10 questions in detail. We'll explain the right and wrong answer choices and common pitfalls in these questions. So grab a piece of paper and be prepared to pause this video so that you can come up with an answer on your own before we get into the details Good luck. You may already know this, but just in case you don't remember, the NREMT cognitive exam is divided into five content categories. Medical slash OBGYN is one of them. Each question also falls into three cognitive levels, recall application and analysis, and we'll cover a few of each in this question set. Ready for the first question? Let's go. Question one, which organ is responsible for filtering and removing old red blood cells from circulation? A, liver, B, spleen, C, kidney, or D, pancreas? Pause here if you need a second. The answer is B, spleen. A is wrong because the liver metabolizes toxins but does not filter blood cells. B is correct because the spleen filters blood and removes the damaged cells. C is wrong because kidneys filter waste, not cells. And D is wrong because the pancreas regulates blood sugar. The common mistake here is confusing the liver and spleen functions. Always a good reminder of what these organs do spleen, pancreas, kidney, liver, all of these things. Give yourself a good refresher before the National Registry exam. Question two, which of the following is a sign of stroke? A, sudden rash and itching. B, gradual weakness over several days. C, sudden facial droop and slurred speech or D, high fever and muscle aches? The answer is C, sudden facial droop and slurred speech. Why? A, more so suggests an allergic reaction. B is not right because strokes are typically very sudden. C is correct because this is a classic stroke symptom or classic stroke symptoms. D is wrong because flu-like symptoms, not typically neurological. The common mistake here is expecting strokes to develop gradually. If you chose B, I understand, but that's not correct. Question three. A diabetic patient is confused, pale, and sweating. His glucose is 52 milligrams per deciliter. What should you do? A. Administer oxygen and transport. B. Give oral glucose if the patient can swallow. C. Begin CPR. Or D. Apply an AD and wait for ALS. The answer is B. Give oral glucose if the patient can swallow. Why is that? Oxygen might help, but it doesn't really correct the issue here. B is correct because low glucose in a conscious patient equals oral glucose. This is our tool as EMTs. Typically EMTs don't have dextrose. And so our only option is to give glucose orally, which means they need to have a patent airway and an ability to clear um, their throat, right? We don't wanna put oral glucose into a person who cannot clear their airway. And so low glucose plus conscious equals oral glucose. C is wrong because we do not have an indication of cardiac arrest. And D is wrong because AD is not useful unless the patient is pulseless. The common mistake here is skipping glucose administration when the patient is still responsive. If this is really the critical issue here, we want to recognize this early because as their glucose continues to go down, um, 
they may no longer be able to clear their airway and then our only tool as EMTs, oral glucose, is no longer available to us. Question four. You arrive to find a 36-year-old female with lower abdominal pain and vaginal bleeding. She says her last period was seven weeks ago. What should you suspect? A. Urinary tract infection. B. Ectopic pregnancy. C. Placenta previa. Or D. Endometriosis. The answer is B. Ectopic pregnancy. A is wrong because UTIs typically present with painful urination. B is correct because first trimester bleeding plus pain unfortunately means this might be a possible ectopic pregnancy. C is wrong because placenta previa occurs much later in pregnancy. Um, if she in fact did get pregnant seven weeks ago, um, this wouldn't be the case. D is wrong because endometriosis is a chronic condition, not uh, usually a sudden and emerging condition. The common mistake here is not considering pregnancy in um, reproductive age females. Um, it's something we kind of have to do. Question five. A 60 year old male is experiencing chest discomfort and shortness of breath. He has a history of angina. What? should you do first? A. Place the patient in a flat and give them glucose. B. Administer high flow oxygen if SpO2 is less than 94%. C. Have the patient walk to the ambulance. Or D. Give nitroglycerin even without medical direction. The answer is B, administer high flow oxygen if SpO2 is less than 94%. Why is that? A is wrong because supine position worsens respiratory distress. Keep that in mind. Even if you have somebody that's breathing acceptably but they feel like they're having difficulty breathing, raise them up, let them sit up. That's usually a little bit easier, more comfortable for them. B is correct because oxygen is indicated with low saturation. C is wrong because ambulation may worsen the condition. Don't have them walk over to you. And D is wrong because EMTs need approval to assist with nitroglycerin. In most cases, follow your local policies and procedures. Common mistake here is giving nitro without vitals or permission. We also have certain indications and, and contraindications in order to administer nitro, even if it was approved. And so considering a question that does not give us any answer, such as the vitals that we might need to certify that that patient can be given nitro, usually isn't the answer. That's why B is correct. Oxygen is indicated because saturation is low. Question six. A patient is having a seizure when you arrive. What is your first priority? A, open the airway with a tongue depressor. B, restrain the patient to protect them. C, ensure the area is safe and protect the patient's head. Or D, insert an oral airway to prevent aspiration? The answer is C. Ensure the area is safe and protect the patient's head. Why? A is wrong because you never insert anything into the mouth during a seizure. B is wrong because restraints can and likely will cause harm in patients that are actively seizing. C is correct because scene safety and injury prevention comes first. They might be moving around a lot, and so if you see a small coffee table with sharp corners, move it. If there's a vase on top of, on top of that, move that. 
If there are chairs nearby, move them away. Give them space, let, the, let them seize, and then turn them on the side um, when they're finished so that if there is anything that is produced, it uh, will leave their mouth and they won't aspirate it. D is wrong because OPAs are used postictally if needed. The person needs not to have an intact gag reflex. The common mistake here is trying to manage airway or a strain during an active seizure. There are things that uh, we will have waiting, like oxygen, uh, when they stop seizing, but not always going to be possible to apply our tools and tricks um, while they're actively seizing. Question seven. You arrive to a patient actively delivering a baby. After the baby is born, he is not crying or breathing. What is your first step? A. Begin chest compressions. B. Suction the airway with a bulb syringe. C. Tap the soles of the feet and warm the baby. Or D. Ventilate with a BVM immediately. The answer is C. Tap the soles of the feet and warm the baby. Why? A is wrong because compressions are for a heart rate less than 60 after ventilation. If you don't remember your infant or neonatal CPR protocols, you need to review those. Suction is only if the airway is obstructed. C is correct because stimulate and dry before further intervention. And D is wrong because BVM is for apnea after stimulation fails. The common mistake here is jumping to ventilations too early. I recognize the need for these interventions, possibly if the baby does not improve very, very rapidly. But when it comes to the care of an infant immediately after delivery, there is a procedure we need to follow. And so review those if you're not sure. Question eight. A pregnant woman in her third trimester complains of headache, swelling of her hands, and blurry vision. What is your top concern? A, eclampsia. B, preeclampsia. C, placental abruption. Or D, imminent delivery. The answer is B, preeclampsia. Why? Full eclampsia, once they're there, usually involves seizures. Not good, but not the case here. B is correct because these are warning signs of preeclampsia, and that's kind of where we're at. C is wrong because abruption equals severe pain and bleeding, specifically. And D is not correct because we do not have labor signs like contractions that are present. The common mistake here is confusing preeclampsia with abruption or early labor, or even eclampsia for that matter. Know the differences. Question nine. You are assisting in delivery and you see the umbilical cord presenting before the baby. What should you do? A, push the cord back in and transport rapidly. B. Apply gentle traction to the cord. C. Place the mother in knee chest position and transport. D. Wait for ALS to arrive before moving her. The answer is C. Place the mother in knee chest position and transport. Why is that? A is wrong because you never, ever push the cord back inside. B is wrong because traction may cause rupture. C is correct because this position relieves pressure on the cord. And D is wrong because a time sensitive emergency equals beginning transport immediately. The common mistake here is trying to manipulate the cord manually. There is one situation in which you might review those specifics in your book. 
Question 10. A 70-year-old diabetic male is found unresponsive. His family reports he took his insulin but has not eaten. What is the most likely cause? A. Stroke. B. Hyperglycemia. C. Hypoglycemia. Or D. Cardiac arrest. The answer is C. Hypoglycemia. Hopefully this was a nice and easy one to finish off this video. Why is that? Stroke is possible but less likely with insulin use and no food. Um, you know, we want to be suspicious of a lot of different uh, options, but you know, at least where I am, when you hear hoofbeats, you think horses, not zebras. B is wrong because hyperglycemia develops more slowly. C is correct because insulin plus no food equals likely hypoglycemia. D is wrong because he has vital signs. No arrest. The common mistake here is overestimating stroke frequency in diabetics. It's not something we see uh, too often. Anything's possible. Keep your wits about you. But when we have insulin and no food because they got distracted or because they got called away for something for work or whatever, likely they're becoming more and more hypoglycemic. That's why C is correct. Thank you for watching. I really hope you found these questions helpful. Please like and subscribe if you can. It really helps us out, especially if you missed even one of these questions so that we can be a part of your learning journey. Ask questions in the comments if you have any and let us know your score. We'll see you in the next one.